Welcome to Penny Bradley Nachtwaffen Pilot Presents. I'm pre today I'm presenting my friend Will Glover, and we have alters who serve on a ship together, and we've been friends for a couple of years now. So we've we've had interviews together in the past when he was first getting started talking and Today, he has agreed to spend an hour chatting with me on record. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Penny. Good so, to be here. <clears throat> do, you want, do you want to talk about some of the things that you did with my altar, or do you want to talk about more what you did in Kruger along with uh, Joel Chase and Matt Tracy. Uh, I, I <clears throat> we can. Uh, I don't think the, the the thing with that whole meeting between us and the altars has ever been like really expanded upon. So why don't we just start off with that, since that's how we started our friendship, kind of. So. Okay. Um, my side of this story was that we were friends and talking in in email and. Will here connected with me telepathically, real world here and now, and took both of us in his head into the altar that is on the flagship of the Nachtwaffen Armada, where he is a sergeant, I believe, an enlisted, an enlisted man who has access to the bridge. And uh, my altar there is a navigator and is on the bridge, at least occasionally, and that particular day I was, and I got to see my altar through Will's altar's eyes, and it was, I have never experienced anything like that before. That was the most amazing experience. And I got to watch myself be really, really rude to this man. And he still speaks to me, so I feel really honored. <laughs> well, I was I'm not sure exactly when that happened, but I'm pretty sure that was the first time that happened. Yeah, that was the first. That was definitely the first experience. It happened with Matt, too, but that was definitely the first time I'd ever done anything like that. Real time, alter connecting, like that was, I mean, I wish I knew what I did or how that happened. It just happened spontaneously, but it was definitely, definitely very, very cool, intense, uh, very validating experience. Yeah, I had had bits and pieces of that alter because she has a somewhat difficult situation where she is. Um, my commanding officer doesn't like me and is trying to get me off his ship. And he's doing things that are illegal under Nachtwaffen regulations. And every so often I will blow up. <laughs> and then he puts the blow up into my record without the context. So it makes me look like I'm irrational. And uh, it's not a fun place for me. So when we've talked about this privately, you've understood kind of what was going on. But the commanding officer looks at me and says, you're a Draco. You just look like a human. You smell like a Draco. You act like a Draco. You're a Draco. So. That's how they made us. I mean, that's, but we're good at what we do. So, I mean, unfortunately they have to use us and that's just what it is. I mean, it, I mean, we wouldn't have risen to the position that we were at if we weren't good at what we did. I mean, they don't, they don't take weak. I mean, there's no, there's no wasted effort with them. So, I mean, you're there because you're good at your job, you know? That's and they couldn't find anybody else better to do it. Well, they could. They could have had a full Draco there, and yeah, but they they can't live around a full Draco. So they, I'm the next best thing. Right. 
So what do you do on that ship? You know, I honestly, most of my, what I would call just dark fleet memories. I'm not sure, like, I, I don't know, but just with dark fleet, I, I know that I'm a pilot. I mean, I know I, I seem like I'm in a smaller ship. This is kind of like a regular running back and forth, but I don't know. I mean, I also feel like I have, there's another altar that's in a much higher position and I'm not, not sure what exactly where he works or what he does. Um, he might, I just, I don't have any Germanic ties, so I don't know how I could be an officer in Nakwafen. That's my, that's kind of the hang up is where I don't, I don't understand that, how that works. And then you mentioned like the, there was some, another black uniform with the, with the, like a, an eagle or some sort of like Phoenix little symbol that you mentioned. I don't, it was in a, it was in a comment that you, mm. uh, that it come up in the group and that's very similar to the, the alt to the uniform I see my altar in. And I, I don't know what group that is, whether it's Solar Warden or Navy mm. or some the, other fancy the thing. Black uniforms are almost, once you're out in space, Mm -hmm. Black uniforms are almost exclusively Knox Okay. They also have black ships, and the combination is why Solar Warden calls them Dark Fleet. Right. They're not any more evil than anybody else out there. They're just the Germans instead of the Americans. And oh, no. Yeah. When, once the Germans got into space, they figured out real quick that any human has more in common with them than any ET. So a lot of their racial prejudice dropped off in the first few months. Well, I mean, I think it goes back to your point you're making about, you know, they have to use us for navigators. I mean, they have to use, they have to use other people to do what they want to do. So it is what yeah. it is. They would have been perfectly fine with me had I not been shot up with Draco DNA by the CIA. Well, wouldn't that be all of us then? Pretty much. Now, in, is it the CIA or is it Monarch working through the CIA? Or is it, does it matter? I don't think it matters at this point. They are, right. so, they are so meshed together that they might right. as well be the same group. Right, same entity. Um, no, that's, a, that's kind of my thinking too, for sure. What, and everybody wants to say that it's the Nazis in the CIA, but the ones that I've seen that were Nazis that were taken to the CIA were actually Jesuits. Mm -hmm. So you've got, when you've got multiple memberships in secret societies, you have to take those other groups into account too. And a lot of it get the more I remember, the more complicated the whole situation gets. And it's, it's when I start talking about things in terms of shades of gray, people start freaking out. <laughs> you know, nobody out there is as bad as they're painted, and nobody mm -hmm. out there is as good as they're painted. Everybody out there is kind of in the same general territory of they're looking out for what they see as their own best interests for their own reasons. And nobody is helping humans just to help humans. They think they're going to get something out of this. Well, that's, I mean, to me, that's everything that's how the world works i mean that's how i mean everybody has an agenda i mean i'm sorry that's just the way it is and like yeah i feel like that's the big disconnect between et's and humanity is that we still fall for this these games of altruism or you know that people don't like that someone's just going to do something just out of the goodness of their hearts now i mean granted that might happen it's not definitely not the majority of things and not not for a sustained long-term save a whole planet type of deal. I mean, that's a lot of energy just to, I'm going to do it for, for love. You know, I don't, that seems unrealistic. I mean, people, there's always, everything has an agenda. I mean, that's just life. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's what it is. I mean, I don't know to not to think such black and white. I don't, I don't, I don't under, I mean, it's too much Disney or something. I don't understand. Like it's just not, well, even Disney, you've got the bad guys are hiding and, and 
if you pay attention, you'll find them there. But, um, I mean, seriously, you can't have a good story without a bad, bad guy. And I think that's part of the problem is that they want a good story. They don't want the truth. The truth is nobody out there is really evil. Nobody out there is really good. You've got a lot of self-centered self grayness. And, you know, people making are making bad choices everywhere. And it's reached a point where the rest of the galaxy is starting to push back. Mm -hmm. um, I've got, well, it was 45 days last year that I was taken twice a night for a 60 and back to rescue people from a colony that the galactic authority had destroyed. And they had, the galactic authority had told the Germans to evacuate it, that to, you know, to leave because the Germans had been committing atrocities. Well, so have everybody else out there. And so I'm, I've got 90 altars doing 60 and backs that's about a year old now and uh they were sent to travel back in time to rescue these people and what so what we've got is because uh, the time loop comes back i know we failed mm. we could we didn't have enough ships mm. And there's a point at which you can no longer travel back to that same time. Right. Hmm. And we reached that point and didn't have enough ships. We only rescued half the people. And those are the ships that are coming back through the sun. And everybody's freaking out, thinking the solar system's being invaded. And it's just the Germans bringing their colonists back to the solar system, like the galactic authority ordered them to mm -hmm. and i've probably got 90 altars sitting in those ships <laughs> you know <laughs> bringing people back and uh i'll tell you they ex they went past my capability because i've been sick ever since they did that right and it's it's they took too much of my energy because they split me that many times. It's too much. 60 altars is ridiculous doing 60s and backs. Um, do, you, do you remember how they destroyed the planet? Because I have, I mean, I have a recall of, of being a part of a evacuation and just wondering if it's the same planet or the same. Do you remember, happen to remember seeing exactly how it happened? Because I saw a portal open and I saw a missile or plasma or something come and hit the planet that was that like that was that was it that's pretty much what i remember being told about i wasn't i wasn't out there to see it but i was told that it was hit with a with a massive plasma weapon something that we the germans could not defend against and i do tend to say we because i have so many altars serving with the germans for so long a period of time uh the first altar that i remembered was raised with the germans right. so i i i grew up on mars with the germans before i grew up on earth in america <clears throat> when uh when you were in in, in school shola 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 was there was Shola? Was there a bunch of uh, Nazi propaganda, like Nazi stuff, everywhere on the walls? They didn't call it Nazi stuff. Well, I mean, were there swastikas and red and all that? Okay. They they kept what they called German insignias. It was German culture, German tradition. It See, wasn't. It wasn't Nazi party. I don't because I don't remember. I remember being in Lederhosen in class. 
but I don't remember seeing Nazi stuff. I don't remember seeing swastikas and red and all that. I remember seeing like scenes from like European like knights and shit. Like I didn't see, I didn't see not. I never saw. I don't, like I don't remember seeing like the red arm patch with the Nazi thing. Like I don't. I, can't I don't remember, remember anyone wearing a red arm patch. Um, it was it was a banner on the wall where they had m the morning meetings. Mm -hmm. It in um, the nineteen seventies and eighties, right? Because I was shipped off off Mars in nineteen ninety, but um, it wasn't so much in Shula. I think there was one banner in the cafeteria, but uh, the rest of it. It was, yeah, you're right. There were all the pictures about the um, Teutonic Knights. You remember it looked, that? It looked, like, it looked like Renaissance paintings or looked like, I mean, it looked like, I mean, it was all beautiful. I mean, it just wasn't, like, I guess it was such a hard time because I never, I just didn't never remember, I never thought of all that as Nazi because I never saw swastikas and all that crap, you know, and didn't, I never saw that. But, um, I, I, the longer I thought about it and the more I remembered, the less Nazi it became. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we were in school. I mean, it was, there was probably 20 kids, 15 kids. We're all wearing like lederhosen with the green and a, like a beige shirt with the suspenders, like, like traditional, I mean, maybe not suspenders, but definitely the lederhosen. I definitely remember the white socks. Um, but yeah, that was, I remember it us running off. the uniform after I got out of there. What's that? The, when I was in Shula, the boys were wearing brown trousers down to their ankles and, <laughs> and white shirts that buttoned. They, they looked a little more um, like formal. Right. What you did, almost like church clothes. At least in my part of Texas West, <laughs> right? I, I in California. I grew up in the part where Buck Owens called it Texas West. No, I know, I know, I know Baker's. I mean, I know Bakersfield and all that. Yeah, all that. I was. I was an hour north of Bakersfield, so I was in Texas West. Interesting. <laughs> you know, all that going on right there. And, um, and my mama was from Oklahoma, and my dad's people were from Arkansas, and I grew up with an accent very much like yours. Right. <laughs> I know. It happens. Of course it happens. it happens. By the end of this interview, I may be sounding just like you. <laughs> I slide <laughs> into that so easy. <laughs> well, it's like, like a bike. It's like riding a bike. So, sound, yeah. Sound ridiculous soon again. But, uh, so you wore later Hosen in, in Shula. Well, that's, I remember it. I'm, I, but I also remember like, uh, a lighter shirt and trousers too. It's so, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I'm trying, but we were small. I mean, we were like, that was like maybe second grade, you know, like we were kids, kiddos. How old were you when you were taken? The first time I remember a ship was four. Yeah, I was uh, four when I was taken. But I used to, I mean, I used to see Draco's all the time. So I don't know before that. So I don't know if that's, if I was taken then or if I was just seeing somebody checking up on me or what. But I mean, I, used, I had like the shadow imaginary friend. I mean, it was, my imaginary friend was a Draco. I mean, I just, I mean, I didn't realize that, but that's what it was. You know, it got to the point, like the first time I saw him, I mean, I was scared shitless, but like by age five, I was so, I was just used to it. Like it wasn't, it was just that black energy that I, it wasn't like negative. It was, I never felt negative. It was just black, big. like, it was, you know, and big, big. big. Yeah. But I yeah, think and, that and, the, the black is usually that they're just out of phase with us, which, the Draco do that so that they don't injure us. Oh yeah, no, it was, it was, it felt really like 
but I've always had, I, you know, I know they can shape shit or I know they can project different things, but I mean, it was, uh-huh. I mean, I always had this character in my head. I mean, he would always, you know, say I was his, he, that I was his son and all this stuff. And, you know, I remember one time it was, it was like another me. It was like my twin brother. And he was huge, all thick and jacked up. And, and like, and he comes up to me and he's like, all right, we're going to go kill some, you know, we got to go take care of, you know, we got to take care of this guy. And I'm like, yep, sorry, not, not going to do that. You know, not, not doing that. And the other, like my, the other guy was like, yeah, hell yeah. He was like, let's do this, you know, all pumped up. And, and I was just like, no, no, not going to do it. And he's like, you think you've gotten away? Think you can get away? And I was like, and then that was the end of it. But yeah, always the intimidation from that guy, but whatever. It is what it is. So can't you think our, that we can't guy, choose our fathers, can we? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. We can't choose <laughs> our family either. You were talking about the the invisible friend. Um, mine was a little blonde boy with green eyes. That's nice. Uh, turned out he was living in the Philippines while I was in Texas, West California. Hmm. And uh, he had been number five to my number seven in Langley. And they had left us telepathically connected. Huh. So we grew up on, we grew up in Langley and Mars together. And we were connected when we were growing up on Earth. Mm, but that was interesting. Uh, yeah, until he reached a point where that he didn't think I was real anymore. Uh, we actually did meet in 2013, real hmm. world. He's the guy that used my remember code on me. Oh, wow. Okay. Gotcha. So, yeah. Hmm. Well, that makes sense. Does it makes sense that they would use someone that I would trust. <clears throat> yeah, I still, I mean, I still ponder that, like, why they did that. I wonder, I still have my... Still wonder about that. I do too. Uh, I, mean, I know there's. I know it's like a chess game thing where you know I'm sure they look through their time scope and like, oh, well, she remembers and everybody remembers or whatever. The, you know, like one of those key logs or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, when we were doing the butterfly effect tests in in 1961 <laughs> at Montauk. Uh, they found that there are key people that actually change the timeline and that other people don't. And uh, I don't know. I never thought I was one of the people that would change time. I, I had embraced this idea <clears throat> That in the greater scheme of things, I was a nobody, and I was okay with that. And I had I was devoutly Christian, which was probably programming. And um, I had completely embraced servanthood. Mm-hmm. So you'll find that even though I talk about what happened in space, most of what I actually do is help people live with their memories right which is still embracing servanthood Mm -hmm. but um well gotta do something (laughs) i'm 64 i'm disabled i can walk a whole quarter mile i have to do i have to do something gotta do something so Um, i sit in front of a computer and talk to people all day or actually, I start my day around noon, and I'm still, I'm finishing up just after midnight. Well, you got, you got a lot of people to take care of, so a lot of questions to be answered. Yeah, the, the group is, what, 3,300 people about now? hmm yeah. And you just recently joined Facebook and, and joined our group. And I did. Yeah. I did. Time to... That that that's, that's huh? a lot of courage on your part. 
<laughs> I enjoyed my yes space. I guess I don't know. I I just didn't. I just didn't have the recall. I felt like to be. I don't know. Like I was just still processing. You know, I wasn't ready to come out like that. So I, mean, I don't. I'm already been like I did my first interview because I was afraid for my life. I mean, a lot of that was because of other things. Too. This is now. It's you know it's different. I, I don't. I don't really know how I feel about the whistleblower term. I definitely don't feel like that. But I mean, I just I do. I do. I'm really glad I, there's a space I can go where I can ask questions and get some answers and get feedback. That's, that's, that's awesome. I mean, that, that's helps me stay sane for sure. That was the purpose of the group was for those of us who really have memories to have mm -hmm. a place where we can hang out without family, Facebook friends, weirdos in general laughing at us. It, it's a place where we can talk, compare notes on, what was done to us and how we feel about it and the health problems that we have as a result of what they've done to us and it's it's just like any other special interest group <laughs> but yeah we're the admins um we had all been waking up together Mm -hmm. And we were in a chat room. There were, I think, 20 of us. And we were all coming up with these similar memories, similar enough to know it wasn't on Earth, that it was in space. I was beginning to make sense of the big pile of memories in German. Right. <clears throat> and I went to a Me Labs group. And, uh, I probably shouldn't say his name, <laughs> but Fritz Springmeier decided that I was a demon because I had understood that I had Draco DNA added to me. Therefore, I was was a demon, not demon possessed like everybody else, but a de actual demon. Mm -hmm. And so they all, in their super paranoid way, they all turned on me and I left the group. Right. And uh, I went to a, well, she, I went to a group that was for experiencers. Mm -hmm. That's everything, that was everything from Faye saw, Faye um, star seeds to people to boys from Montauk because she said only boys had been at Montauk. And I guess the in the 80s that was true, but in the 60s it was all of us. And uh, I found that I would get upset talking and people would complain because I was blowing out their circuit breakers in their house. That the only circuit breaker that didn't blow was the one on their their computer was on right <laughs> yeah and so i stopped going mm -hmm. because i was obviously a danger to others at that point and so tomas beat me to it forming the group nice and i was the first person he added and we now have what five actual people and a couple of of sock puppets <laughs> i think three of us have sock puppets as, as admins because we keep getting locked out i got, i got locked out of my sock puppet <clears throat> wow um i got locked i got perma banned on my original profile right it was a major major shock to my system for Facebook to put up this big thing across my screen that says you are too dangerous to be on our platform. Hmm. I'm like, what do I do? I help a bunch of crazy people stay 
rational. Right. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> but wow. Yeah, I don't know. They're. I mean, they, like I said, they probably had the chrono advisor, and they they can probably see like, oh God, we gotta, you know, like they're, you know, they probably see what these little tiny things end up making big waves down the road. Who knows? Yeah, I think that's exactly what they're doing. I think I think even QAnon was bringing up the Corona visor, whatever QAnon is. But I mean, that's I mean that's even being more accepted as this kind of like that a normal thing where you know that was like oh well Corona visor. I'm like yeah, big deal. Of course we know that's not even a big. I mean that's like whatever, second grade, third grade, but. Yeah, chronovisors are how they figure out which ones of us they have to take back and, and mind wipe again. <laughs> again. 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 No. So, yeah, the chronovisor is how they figure out who is going to cause them trouble. And after, well, the guy that, that activated my memories was NSA. And. By 2016, um, I had pretty much figured out a basic timeline for that first altar. Mm -hmm. And I had not yet figured out there were more altars. <laughs> right. Yeah, so it was Tomas that came up with that. He says, you know, you have more than one altar. No. Think about that. And Tomas says, you know, they can take you more than once in the same night. They don't take you just the once. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have this per perfectly trained killing machine. Why would they use it once and let it go? Right. And that was like, I spent months mulling that one over <laughs> was like oh shit how many more are there and then Stuart Swerdlow has a book out uh, 13 cubed mm. where he talks about how many altars they created in the second Montauk program and what they were forming was a 13 by 13 by 13 cubic array and it's hierarchical so they can train one altar to do something and then split you and all of the splits will have that, those abilities. So mm -hmm. that's how they broke us and why they did it the way they did. Um, I've reintegrated 30. I think they're all in the same pathway. Um, right. And half of them have been just stored trauma. Right. Well, that's, yeah, I think they, like you'll have your, your alpha, your delta, and then they'll have sub, you'll have your, you know, that they'll break, they'll break you. And then they'll break that actual delta altar. The one that's already hardcore and broken, they break him or whatever in your case right. or her, but, and then there's, they split down from that and then, because when I've integrated those, I, they, like you said, they're, a lot of them seem to be very base. Like it's like one or two memories or like just like, it's almost like a static frozen frame kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, the next thing that was hard to fathom was that some of my alters would think they were male. Right. And they were in avatar bodies that were male. Right. And after I came to terms with it, it was like, okay, that's where I get my aggressive side that that scares a lot of people. <laughs> well, it might be the Draco side, but yeah. Yeah, it might be the Draco. Um, I don't. I don't see myself as scary. I see myself as just. I don't take a lot of shit, that's all. <laughs> it's kind of Draco. <laughs> no offense. Just none none meant, none taken, no. 
But no, I, 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 my timeline of waking up, it, it took me about a year to realize that I had alters, literally about a year, finally being somebody that met me and that knew me and having that connection that helped. And then it took me about another year to realize that I was actually still active. That, that was a, a mind bender for me was that I was still being used. That was, that took a, that took a while for me to get through, but yeah. With my activation, I became lucid mm -hmm. 24-7. I still am six and a half years later. Unless I take some sort of sleeping drug. Right. Um, and so I, would, I was suddenly awake to know all this stuff. Mm -hmm to experience it because before I would be unconscious asleep and not notice. Oh yeah. You had this interaction with these guys or you got taken for tw a 20 year trip or, you know, whatever. I thought when I, when I first started weeding through the lump of memories in German, I thought I only had the one altar and that I was done. <laughs> not, <laughs> not even. <laughs> um, I have a personal altar that takes over the body about once a week mm. on a regular basis. It's a different day of the week every week, but Lou says that he has to remind her to take my meds and eat and basic stuff because she's like mm -hmm, who cares <laughs> and she cops an attitude at him uh, yeah it's, it's good to have partners that can understand what it's what it's what is what we're going through here because i do i do very similar things you know actually my partner is another in my lab too so it's it's really interesting watching her go through it and her get triggered and her the whole nine yards, you know, like because you can like oh wow you're 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 different today, <laughs> you know, and it's just I don't know it helps it helps have somebody understands absolutely. Yeah, I had noticed that there were whole days that I had no memory of them, and I would go through and read my. Facebook messages and make sure I hadn't done anything wrong. <laughs> I mean, I, I have a buddy that his, when we talk on the phone, his altar will come through and he doesn't, he won't remember what he just said. Like, but, you know, like literally takes over when we're on the phone. So. Yeah, yeah. I've had aspects mm -hmm. take over while I was talking to people. And at least with an aspect, you can listen in and know what's coming out of your mouth. But with another altar taking over. Um, last September, a group of us met in Las Vegas for a couple of days. It wasn't very long. It was, we went to Area 54 to visit the Tall White Base, and we went to Area 51 and stopped at the gate. And we went to the Little Alien, and just we watched some movies, and we just generally talked. It was five of us. Cool. And it was a blast, but one of the guys that was there, and he's an admin of the group, he kept watching me drop things and he says, Penny. And I look at him and he says, he looks straight in my eyes and says, only one of you can run the body at a time. <laughs> and I'm like, it is so cool to have someone in the, in the house who understands. <laughs> And I, but I asked him, am I really that obvious? And he says, to someone who knows what to look for, yes, you're really that, that obvious. Yeah, but you, you notice it in everybody in a way. I mean, it's like, it's just, ours are, 
ours are more way more dramatic the splits between it our little aspects of ourselves so yeah <laughs> a little bit expanded as it were but yeah no it's yeah it's it's weird it's really i mean i i hope we get some i hope we get something some some something because a lot of us are not doing well and you know i i hope i hope we get some sort of this i don't even know what i'm asking for but well what i'm seeing in the group is a lot of us have been put on psych meds mm -hmm. and what those do it basically is shut down your psionic abilities they don't do much for the actual condition other than make you numb enough you don't care um i was on effexor long enough to get serotonin sickness mm -hmm. and uh, i was going blind diarrhea temperature the whole thing and when i came off it they immediately Put me on a low dose of Prozac because basically they didn't want my psi abilities at all. And right. when I finally said no mas, you know, no more, I asked to be taken off them, you know, to be weaned off. And they said, no, you're stable on this. We're not going to mess with you. And I basically said, F you and what took went off at cold turkey. It took about six weeks to get it out of my system and Lou was pissed. Oh, he was, he said I was a real bitch during that time. Oh. And uh, he was angry. He wanted me back on it because I was so sweet during that time. Yeah, and about six months later was when the NSA activated my memories. Wow. So. And here we are. Have they tried to put you on any of the, the meds? My whole life. My whole life. They tried to put me on Ritalin when I in first grade. So, yeah. I just, I got lucky that my mom's hard-headed and didn't do it back then and then i just always knew that it was not what i wanted for whatever reason and never tried i just always you know i guess it's programming and just general paranoia towards most things coming into my body for some reason yeah. for some reason i don't trust doctors that well i don't know and i have a hard time <laughs> in a dentist chair i don't some some reason but but yeah no nah, it's for it's, some <laughs> reason <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, no, I'm, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that it just I still had I still I mean I had memories my whole life. Like I still I mean it was always a puzzle because I I remembered stuff as a kid. I didn't remember a lot of how I got here and there and things, but I was pretty lucid as a kid. It wasn't until I got into college that I just couldn't take my dreams anymore. And I started doing things to keep me from dreaming because i was just i can't i was like i'm over it like i can't i can't do with it i can't i mean i just got so tired of waking up so tired you know so exhausted all the time uh, yeah i've been waking up exhausted for the last week and uh i was supposed to have a recording session on saturday and because of the holidays it got postponed till after and I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, those, I'm doing a set, a set of podcasts with a friend in Russia, and he's translating them into Russian, and they're on his Patreon, and they go a lot more in depth than YouTube videos. Right. And at the end of it, I'm, I'm exhausted for a couple of days because well you know what it's like emotionally talking about this stuff it you you have to go deep into the mess you go into that altar like you just know there's no other way around it you connect to that altar you're mixing and matching shit for a little bit and then 
and but you get we get stuck with the hangover i mean that's mm -hmm. like my friend we're always talking like what why are we even here like why even have an altar on earth you know like what is the deal you know and then i realized it's like like when you take the mouse and you move something into the trash like that's us like when they get when the system's too much like they just throw it to us and we get to deal with the trash from our altars and that's what it feels like a lot of times well i've reintegrated with the altar who served on mars mm -hmm. and most of the time she's okay with the situation um once in a while she'll decide i'm being a pussy and that's okay. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> and she will come out and she is I, I, she sees herself as assertive and confident and Teutonic. Right, like we're trained. And she has access to the Draco part as well. Mm. And uh, she just tells me you're being a pussy you're letting people walk on you you're letting people take advantage of you you you're not taking care of yourself and she'll take over for a week at a time and i will start getting these messages well you're not as available as you used to be You're not as supportive as you used to be. Well, you know, I'm sorry. Right. The lieutenant's in charge. <laughs> and she doesn't, she's, she's yeah. never been a mother. She doesn't, she doesn't think in those terms. Now, lieutenant, is that different than a navigator? Is it a different altar? It, it's the first, most of my altars are lieutenants. Okay because that's the rank you have to be to be a navigator. Right. And even the Germans maintain that. You have to be a boy to not to be a navigator. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been as high as commander. Right. And I've been doing my family tree and I have found some Germans, but it goes back about six generations, which isn't far enough, isn't recent enough for the Germans to care. But I have worked myself up to commander in Kruger and in Nachtwaffen. Um, out of my 2200 altars, I have altars in Nachtwaffen, altars in Kruger, and altars in the CIA. Question for you. Do you think that, well, don't, you've done the history, so I'm asking this question. Do you think if you had a past life as a Templar, that would give you a little bit more up in, in, in this, the programs or not? Is there any kind of Templar connection? Or do you want to go, is that something we should not talk about? I'm going to be very careful how I word it. No, I, I, okay, there's, there's a certain because, part I know. I because the CIA targets Merovingian descendants. Okay. There is a Templar presence. Uh, the Templar, the Knights Templar are sworn to protect the Grail. Right. And Merovingians are the Grail line. So when they started taking us into space, the Templars demanded to come along to make sure we were not killed on purpose. Ah. Uh. Mm. Okay, so that's why some of these groups want to give the Knights Templar a bad name, is because they're protecting the Merovingians. Right. Um, do the Germans care about the Merovingian line at all? Is that important to them at all, or do they? Yes. Okay. Because the 
The genetic stock that the Merovingians are from. Gotcha. Are Scythian. Okay. Okay. So are most of the Germanic tribes. Hmm. And Rome has always considered the Scythians to be their mortal enemies. Right. And part of the thing with the Scythians were that they were a matriarchy. Hmm. So you have this powerful matriarchy with women warriors right on the border of the Roman Empire. And they were stable for a long time. And then the Mongols in, in Asia started pushing everybody else west. Right. And the Mongols ended up in, in India. That's how far west they went. So they were pushing everybody else west in front of them. And so that shoved all these waves of Scythian tribes into Germany. Well, what's today Germany? Right. And then they would reach the ocean and then come south. And the biggest influx of them was between 250 and 500 AD. And that was when the Merovingian Franks took over Gaul. Right. And then the, I believe it was three tribes that were called Goths. They mm -hmm. were the West Goths, the East Goths, and some other kind of Goths. Anyway, they took over most of the rest of the Roman Empire, except well, most of the Western part of the Roman Empire, even in Northern Africa. And that left, the Eastern half was concentrated in what's today Istanbul. And they put up all kinds of defenses to keep the Goths out. Right. So Western Europe ended up being ruled by Scythian tribes. Mm -hmm. So the Scythians won the war. And what had been the Roman Empire's government structure was taken over by the Vatican. Mm -hmm. And so the Romans and then the Vatican set about trying to destroy the Scythians. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a racial war that went a little deeper because the Scythians were hybrids. They right. were Jahami uh, hybrids, which most people know of the Jahami as the main version of Anunnaki. So, we're talking, these were descended from the Anunnaki. Mm -hmm. And they were mixed with humans. And if you look at them, you can't tell the difference. Except there's a couple of symptoms. Um, they tend to glow. It was like they got a shine to them besides that. But yeah. Yeah, they got a shine to them. And they, uh, <laughs> they tend to have pernicious anemia. So they drink blood. Because that was the treatment for it before they had B12 sublinguals. Um, I have cousins that had pernicious anemia as children and had to eat a pound of raw liver a day. Oh my God. To stay alive. That's hardcore. Yeah, so this is this is a hardcore sickness that goes with the the genetics. <laughs> and <laughs> so yeah. Um, and I have pernicious anemia. I was out of remission most of this year. Um, I had a really hard time in February and March. 
Uh, I started getting better about August. Right. Yeah, you remember I was I was so sick I didn't want to do nothing. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to do interviews. Um, guys, that's the reason because I was sick. Oh, I remember. And uh, when when my doctor saw my blood test results from March, he spent the next half hour just screaming at me. <laughs> because it scared him um the blood test showed that i should have been dead then he did not know how i was alive and so i showed him gee doc i do have some good news i can bend over and touch the floor now and i showed him he says and how did you do that and i said well the grim reaper told me he, he could fix it <laughs> yeah I had I died in February and was sent back and the Grim Reaper was was telling me you know I'm getting really tired of coming and getting you only to have to send you back <laughs> so he he decided to fix the blown discs in my in my back so I can bend over now I still can't walk very far but I can bend over so that was an improvement and that sounds so crazy. You know, the doctor just shut up, his jaw dropped. <laughs> and then he says, when he got his, his composure back, he says, that's a little extreme. <laughs> that's just, that's, that's before breakfast, pal. I said, this is one, yeah, no, I know, I understand. Yeah. We, a little bit different, a little bit different for some of us. Yeah, life's a lot different for some of us. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah have you ever had anything like that uh i don't see doctors so no mm -mm. okay uh i mean when i had those burns i went to a doctor and they didn't know what it was and i was probably should have got a biopsy but i was just too work i just wasn't i was still too whatever emotionally <laughs> whatever i was still dealing with the emotions or everything i wasn't thinking straight so yeah you want to tell the audience what the burns were about i've seen photos and they were horrific don't let him say just these little burns <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> just a, a weird deal it was actually the the night after my first ever not ever but my first contact with an altar uh, in my dreams that I, I felt like a, a very real conscious connection where I was like, oh, okay. Because I was still just under the impression that I was just an abductee and that was that. And I was exploring that part of my experiences because uh, that's, that's what I thought was, I thought all this was like alien mind games. Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't actually think it was happening. I thought it was some, something else, but uh so yeah, when that I, I had my first dream with my altar the next night, I mean, I, I mean that's when I had uh, well that next morning I had the helicopter hover over my house about fifty feet, and then that night I woke up, I uh, went to sleep and woke up the next morning and I had these big red burns on me. I mean they felt like a burn, it blistered up like a burn. I mean I don't know what else to say. It felt felt like a burn. And it healed like a burn, and I still have scars from it. But I'm not surprised after seeing the photos of the burns. Yeah, it was it was pretty brutal. I mean, it was it was definitely a wake up call because I was still kind of, is this real or unreal? You know, I was still like, is this physical or just you know? And then I woke up and yeah, I was I was it's physical, literally like crying and laughing. I mean, it was like these moments of like whoa it is real and then crying like oh my god it's real and i got you know like you feel like mm -hmm. totally violated but you're like oh wow that's this is actually happening you know and but it was it was a very yeah that was the day after my birthday so it's kind of hard for me to forget but yeah that was that was interesting and then then it's that kind of started i started having more and more of these recalls again i guess i opened myself up to having them again i probably was having them the whole time i just wasn't remembering them but because I had gotten some hypno regression sessions done, and I, I know that's 
I know that's when the programming or whatever. I mean, I know that's when they, things were moved around and I had a little opening to start doing some things because my first session I, I, I got done and I felt like electricity, like my teeth were like, you know, like I felt like I was still plugged into like, like I was remembering so much being electrocuted and all the different ways in which they, all the ways they kill us, teach us to behave. So yeah, it was, a. Uh, yeah, and then the you know then the threats kind of started. I mean, I had all this weird stuff happening to me in real life, which so death threat. I mean, I, it was this got it got real weird. <clears throat> real yeah, fast. well, I started talking because I was being shot at with two uh, directed energy weapons, and the third one they just glanced my side, got my kidney, not even a direct hit, just. Mm -hmm. Oh, this overspray and my kidney bled for the next eight months oh man and i was on antibiotics a lot and i'm type 2 diabetic so th it was constantly infected and uh i really thought i was gonna die mm -hmm. at that point and lou and i talked about it the first time i got shot they also shot him and uh, we talked about it when I got hit the third time and said, okay, Bill Cooper had talked about if you know you're being targeted, you know you're being attacked, that the best thing to do is to hide in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. And it won't stop them from killing you, but when they do kill you, people will know you were telling the truth. You're more of a pain in the ass, is the way I see it, for sure. That too. But if <clears throat> that was why I came forward, because my whole intention had been to work in this group and help other people like me. It had not been to do interviews and be famous. And I thought, okay. Now, if I'm going to be public, what is it that is my goal? You know, you got to have a motive, right? Other than saving your own life. And mine is to stop the CIA from abducting people like us as children and mind fracturing us. There's nothing we do out there that can't be done by consenting adults. Absolutely. There's no reason to be, there's no reason to be kidnapping four-year-olds and I putting think, them through five years of torture. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm not defending in, in any way. I just, I feel like we got the blunt, I mean, we got the, the worst of it. You know, I feel like it now with the tech and things, they can probably just download an ultra system within somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot different now they don't have to do they don't have to take you as a kid to turn you into psychic so i mean they can do it differently so we just got the the worst of it i mean we really did and plus i i know that they were still trying to figure out the difference between like just the purely black magic type of trauma-based mind control and actually what is going to work for them I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to defend them at all. Well, I guess I am defending them, but I'm just, I just, it's like I can see their motives and like what they were doing and why things have well, changed. Well, they wanted, they wanted it to, ha to have deniability so that they would have a defense against the obvious criminal charges. Right. Because kidnapping and torturing children is still a criminal offense. And since my generation, 80% of us died in the first year, that's, that's murder on top. And it's premeditated because they kidnapped us first. Well, they, they, well, I, I got that they made, they made two of me or they took, they made an exact copy of me and one had all the gifts and all the special. And then the other one was like, the Danny DeVito character in Twins, you know, like the other oh, one no. left. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and then when they split us, they put what they want into the altered one, augmented one, and then 
they keep us in the Danny DeVito body, you know, and we get the Danny DeVito side. And that's, and then since it's genetically modified and everything, they have the corporate rights that it's not actual human. And they, they, this is their law logic of how they've getting away with this is that they don't consider that other fetus that they made of me to be human because it's been augmented with Draco DNA and therefore not subject to the same rules or laws. All right, which is total bullshit, but that's their legal spiel. Hmm. Well, I was contacted by, well, she said she was NSA, but her email was from DOD. And she was, it was about a year and a half, almost two years ago. And there was something she wanted me to do for her. Gratis, of course. They never pay us. And uh, <clears throat> she slipped out. Well, you're the last of, you're the last of the class of Langley of 64. And I'm like, you sons of bitches, you consider that to be a class? Like, like prep school? No. It's just a different, I mean, I guess maybe I've integrated some of my alters where I just understand where they're coming from. It's totally horrible, despicable sociopath, sociopathic behavior, which I want stopped. But I, I know, I mean, I can see, I can see what they did. I mean, I can see it. I mean, it's, it's, I can see the logic and how they, I can just see it, unfortunately. Um, but that's, no, I mean, that's why I, I talk about it. Cause I don't want my family, I don't want my, I don't want my family being taken and used the same way as me. Straight up period in the story. That's why I'm talking. Well, I have three kids and they were all taken. I have two grandchildren. And I'm pretty sure both of them have been taken. They're both in high school now. Uh, there was not a damn thing I could do to stop it. Mm -hmm. And that disturbs me almost as much as me having been taken. But it's, they're obviously going for a bloodline. And My granddaughter is smarter than I am. Mm -hmm. And she's a senior in high school this year. And she applied for financial aid to go to USC. So apparently she's been accepted there. Okay. So. It's cool. It is a good school, or at least it used to be. Uh, she's gone to this little hick country school that has about 300 students, and she aced the SAT top scores. Well, there, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't do too bad. I had a 1350. <laughs> I did horrible. <laughs> So did my yeah. oldest son. You get 400 points just for writing your name, and he got about a 550. <laughs> no, I remember being triggered. I, some of my most triggered moments in high school was taking those tests. Like, I was like, what is wrong with me? Like, I would, anyways, I wasn't, I, I think there was some self-defense mechanism within me that was like, don't, don't pop up on the radar, stay underneath as much as you can, which is total bullshit, but I mean, yeah. I tried. <laughs> I tried. A lot of us do self-sabotage just to stay off the radar. And it took me a long time to understand that that's why I had lived the life I've lived is because I was actually self-sabotaging to stay off the radar. And then having my memory activated put me right back on it. Yep. Yeah. No, I know. It's it's when 
I mean, that the, my my experience with the targeting or whatever. I mean, that the guy was afraid of me. Like he was sincerely afraid of of me, and I I couldn't. I was like, I did. I don't have a criminal record. Like, what what's the deal, man? Like, I'm not I'm not violent. Like, why are you petrified of me? Like, you're scared of me. You know, like what is like, what's the deal? You know, and he that, felt your Draco. Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, and it, yeah, and it's, <laughs> you still get scared because I, I still see him, but, you know, oh, well, I don't know. I was very nice to him. At least this me. <laughs> I tend to be nice to people, too, and I do get fed up with stupid, you know, if, if you're if you're legitimately not a smart person, I can deal with that. But if I have the Im impression you're a smart person and just being stupid on purpose, it drives me crazy. Right. <laughs> well, we can't, can't, yeah, it's hard to hide things from us. So, yeah. We see things like, <laughs> like my friend's like, you're, you guess you're present. I'm like, yeah, sorry. I can't, you know, like if you want to really trick me, you got to like do it five minutes beforehand. Then maybe you might get me. But yeah, I mean, sorry, that sounds really egotistical. It's only with people that I have a good rapport with and we have a, a bond does that happen. It's not just some random person. But um, yeah, it is interesting. The more I've integrated with my altars, definitely the more psychic and grounded somehow both of those things at the same time which has been real nice because i i mean my first 38 years i was so ungrounded like I, I didn't even know how ungrounded i was like i i was i was barely in this body at all it was it was you know sad i spent most of my adult life just being mom right um i married two incompetent men in a row and both were abusive both tried to kill me mm. and i had these three kids well i'd been pregnant seven times but i lost the other four i in the 19 70s so i'm assuming that i was having a lot of abductions then mm -hmm. and yeah. i was picked up in 95 by a group that they actually pulled me out of the sleep trance to ask me questions i had had cancer in 88 and they were angry because i had had a hysterectomy mm. and they wanted to know why and i said well i had cancer that's how humans treat cancer and they were just absolutely livid and they put a mark on my arm mm. oh, they, yeah. it used to be two squares on point like you would get from from um cattle prod you know right. and uh it used to itch like hell that's why the one square is all torn up and lou used a mechanics magnet on it and it hasn't itched since so i'm pretty sure he de deactivated whatever they left under me that's awesome so uh quick thinking yeah and uh so i'm pretty sure that the four i lost are were part of some hybrid program and they're yeah I don't, yeah they're probably yeah. off in space somewhere <laughs> but i got i got to raise three of them and they're they're smart they're stubborn they're interesting people. Two of them have a hell of a sense of humor and the other one's a stick in the mud. <laughs> but yeah, they're neat, they're neat people. They're, uh, 
my oldest is is going to be 44 and the middle one's going to be 40 next month and the youngest is about to be 36. They all have their birthdays in January and February. There's something about May I always got pregnant. <laughs> Springtime. Springtime. It's warm enough. In California, it's warm enough to be naked. <laughs> right. So, but yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, yeah. I'm happy for you. You have uh, kids? Huh? You have kids? I, I, I can't have kids. So that's, uh, that's what, that was, that's my lingering issue from the projects. So. I'm sorry. Yeah. It is. That's why I've always known there's something wrong with me this whole time. So something. But yeah, so we all have our scars. Yeah. The kids that I did have have congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Right. And it's similar to diabetes, except it's with your adrenals. They don't make cortisone, so they go into insulin shock. Mm. And... Uh, I'm pretty sure that's why the Germans kept telling me that, that they did not want me in their gene pool. Is right. they had a pretty good idea that that's what was going to happen. And some of the other navigators that I've met also have issues with their adrenals. Um, I'm in full-blown Addison's now, which my adrenals have failed, and I take meds to replace it. So um, it seems to be the genetic modification that made us able to do this created adrenal problems. Right. Yeah, it's messed up what they do to us for sure. And they don't care. They send us back, let us have kids or not. And then give us hell because the kids are sick and it's not our fault. Now, yeah, it's like they don't realize that there's energetic dynamics going on between you and your kids and everything else where, I mean, there's our altars in our kids and everything. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not, they don't know. We don't, I mean, just because, yeah. Anyways, they don't. They don't, the fa the family, they don't care. I, probably they don't care. This would be the more accurate term, but they don't care because it covers their ass. But at the mm -hmm. same time, it creates family dynamics that are just horrid. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother has alters. I can start off having a decent phone call with her, and with it, and we can go an hour talking, having a good visit, and she will turn on a dime. Right. Start screaming and cussing at me. And I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I'm just there. So, and she's got my sister convinced that it's Alzheimer's and it's not. It's alters. She's right. been like this her whole life. So, you know, and then I have alters trying to deal with her alters and the lieutenant will come out, Lieutenant Valkyren will come out and fight back. <laughs> and about that time, Lou's saying, I think we need to go home. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, my youngest brother is my only sibling that will speak to me on a regular basis. And... Uh, I have one uncle that talks to me, but he tells everything I say to my mom. <laughs> right. 
I have a nephew that I used to be friends on Facebook with, and he tells everything I say to my mom, so he's no longer my friend on Facebook. And my wall is friends only. So if they're not, if they're going to tell mom, they don't see it. Right. And it makes my family life a whole lot better. I have some distance distant cousins on mom's side that they and I get along fine. And one of them also has altars. So it's been, that's the side of the family that the Merovingian came from. Hmm. So, yeah. So you can even see it in my tree, <laughs> who is likely to be taken. And then you, you don't even have to ask them, well, are you an experiencer? You just watch them for a little while and you'll see the altars. Right. But if you ask them, it's just mood swings. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just, yeah. Or, yeah. I'm just tired. I'm hangry. Yeah. That's my excuse. I'm just hangry. You do that? You tell people that? <laughs> well, I mean, just, just one person, the only person that really cares. But yeah, no. Um, yeah, no, I definitely, we all have our issues. I mean, I have, I have a, my lab better. She'll like, she'll be like, hey, are you in your altar right now? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm not in my altar, you know? She's like, uh, I think you are. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> you know? But yeah, no, I, we definitely, I mean, it's, it is weird having, you know, all these different players inside of us. What's, what's weird is when a bunch of them are there and they share memory and they're take, they're, they can't decide who's going to be the front person. And so you shift and shift and shift. But at least you share memories so you know what you did. Yeah, I set up a school for mine so they can sit in class and learn. <laughs> Since that, that's been a good, good way to help integrate. Yeah, I had to do a class on what was acceptable behavior on earth as a peasant. <laughs> hmm. yeah so i used to have all these experiences where i would see like the a ship and it wasn't even a ship i realize now it was just it was a tail end of like a portal or something and then there's reptilian guards would come out do you think that was some draco th i mean do you think I, don't, I just don't understand because I have like every single house I lived in, there was this one pasture that I was afraid to go to. And I, I can see the same thing happening almost every time to the point where I'm walking, as I'm walking to the ship, into the ship, like I've already changed. Like I'm, some, I'm somebody else, you know, and I, I was wondering, I, anyways, of course, I'm wondering, but I just don't know. I don't know the story on all that. And I've never gotten a good explanation of why I would be like, I mean, it felt like I was getting like a like a treatment, you know, like I was some like I mean, it felt like I was some some somebody important, even though I was just a really small kid, you know. Like I was. I mean, I was being used a lot then. If you're a was, pilot, mm -hmm. you are important. Okay. Normal. I mean, that was when I was being used a lot. Can't do that. Yeah. That because you have, even as a fighter pilot, which is what Kruger uses a lot of, even mm -hmm. as a fighter pilot, you have to have some hyperspace abilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to be able to interface with the ship's computer. Right. And normals can't do that. Well, that makes sense. It was, or I mean, it, I, I'm still, still, still wondering on that one. 
Oh. Now, I know we are important, but I, this feels like a completely, this feels like a separate deal. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I felt like that's when that Draco, I mean, so we get this DNA from Draco, right? I mean, huh. that, that would hook us up to the Draco Collective, correct? Mm -hmm. But wouldn't we be to not, wouldn't we be tied to the actual Draco that they got the DNA from? Maybe. Singularity? Uh, maybe. It depends on how much they, they got from any one Draco. Right. My, okay. my feeling is that they try to get it from several so that, to break that up. Right. But, but they may have gotten it down to a science where it's, okay, we inject this part into this gene and we get it. Gotcha. And, and you know, you're at least a half a generation behind me. They probably perfected it a little better. Right. I guess I was wondering, like, what, I mean, I don't even know my blood type or anything. So I, hor I mean, I'm sorry. I, I'm horrible at this, but I was just wondering yeah. if there's, is there a natural, uh, like, there's a Draco hybrid bloodline on Earth, though, right? Yeah. Already. So if you got somebody from that bloodline and then added Draco to it, wouldn't I mean that would be even more powerful, right? Correct. Maybe no. Maybe what they've been doing is they've been taking Anunnaki hybrids and right. adding Draco to them. Mm -hmm. That's what their game plan was. Right. And then turning us back into the population. Right. I have no idea what they're plotting, um, unless they're plotting to merge the two. Now, the, natu the natural humans that are Draco bloodline mm -hmm. are A minus, A, A R H negative. That, that's the Draco. Okay. The Anunnaki are O R H negative. Mm -hmm. But with both of them, they can have a plus that's hiding a minus. So they call those recessives. Mm -hmm. And the O positives that they're taking into space are recessives. Mm -hmm. They're not taking normals. Right. And normals are O positive. They're like 30% of the population is O positive. And uh, like I said, I don't even know what my DNA is. I mean, I don't eh, well, still get taken. Doesn't matter what my blood type is. Mine done because I have friends who are in something called Dragon Court. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And because I had pernicious anemia so badly. They said, you know, you, you really ought to read these books by Nick DeVere. And I did. And I started doing my family tree like they suggested. And I found Merovingians right off the bat. And uh, I got my blood work done. Now, I know for a fact my mom is O negative. Right. I know for a fact three of my four grandparents were O negative. Okay. So I know this. I know that's what these people are. Mm -hmm. My other grandparent was A positive. And so I did my, my blood type and I'm O positive. I'm the O positive child of an O negative mother before the Rogam shot. Hmm. All of my mom's five kids are O positive. We all made it before the Rogam shot because the Rogam shot wasn't even made until after my youngest brother was born. Your miracle child. <laughs> Yeah, it's a whole house full of miracle childs. Well, you're just that blessed, honey, you know. 
<laughs> just, uh, <laughs> is is that like saying is is that like saying bless your heart <laughs> pretty much <laughs> yeah i think little thing bless your heart dumb as a box of rocks but yeah <laughs> no no it's but yeah that's what they're looking for is those miracle trials right and and the o negatives or the a negatives mm -hmm. yeah um some of the folks in our group are a negative uh there's a few that are a b negative by the way the b negative are the zetas the ones that the u.s government calls evens hmm. so there's hybrids all over the place and they're not just one race oh, no. yeah. and the a b negative those folks are both draco and zeta well then you got that like Carnunas guy, I mean, what is, what did he, I mean, is his line running around there? I mean, what, what's going on with, I mean, like, what, some Cornelius. of these, or, uh, talk to me about this guy. Uh, maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. Um, Cornunos or, uh, oh, Sir Nunos? Yeah. Uh, there's a whole bunch of folks that showed up couple of thousand years ago that they looked like humans but they had animal heads huh. and the ones with the cat's heads are from Lyra the constellation the ones with the dog's heads are from Canis Min Minora I, the ones with the bird's heads I don't know where they're from but I know they're an actual race and I've not seen any others with stag heads other than Cernunos. But he's, he's, he's a European god. Yeah. Uh, but is that, was, are they the one little tribe? I mean, that sounds like a unique group to land together. Or is that just a part of a big group? I mean, is that they one thing? Or is that, that the animal-headed the animal-headed that... animal folk were here with the Shahami, and okay. they, they were mostly in Egypt. That makes more sense. Cool. I can dig it. I can dig so it. it was a whole group of ETs came together. Are they shapeshifters, or they just got the one head? Uh, they're, they just got the one head. Um, so... Huh. Yeah, it was it was just really strange. Indeed. <laughs> you look at some of these pictures and you go, hmm. No, I mean I always thought the he the the heads were just they were seeing like their some animal spirit coming through and that's what they that's what they drew the head because it would be like a instead of a halo you'd see like, you know something else but well that would make that, sense except that i've seen lyrans and i've seen canids well that's exactly my point except for the point <laughs> we've actually seen these guys and i've seen I, 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 of them, so. I i will say uh, in shula they told us to stay away from lyrans uh they told us to be utmost respect to canids and uh it was basically all of those critters you just leave them be <laughs> right and then you then you hear randy kramer talking about that he was in some some trade conference and there were these folks from canis menorah that he wanted to reach out and scratch their ears because they looked so much like like cocker mm -hmm. spaniels i bet that would not have gone over well like we might not get that handbag. Yeah. <laughs> so that was he. He said that he resisted the urge because he did not want to do a cause a galactic incident. <laughs> Mighty human of him. Mighty human of him. Yeah. Have you caused any galactic <laughs> incidents that you know of? uh not that i know of not that i have confirmation on no 
I mean, I, and that's the whole, this whole process is trying to weed out the experiences and try to figure out what's cover memory or what's real or whatever, what reality it happened in. So, but now I, I, I'm sure I have, but nothing that I want to own up to um, at this particular time. <laughs> okay. I can respect that. Nothing you want to <laughs> own up to. That makes sense. <laughs> I mean, it just like, I, I just depends on, I mean, I don't know. Some, I have no memories of the time jumping and I've been told by, I don't have any memories of it really either, but I've been told that I've been part of those projects. So God only knows what has happened. Um, I did get the, I, they sent me back to Egypt times just so to pr proliferate a certain gene line more. So to be certain, like they changed my genetics and then put me back there just so a different, just to add to the genetics of a certain, you know, to get that seed of genetics propagating. So I don't know. I mean, that could have been for better, or for worse. So. Yeah, um, there's a lot of things people tell me I've done that mm -hmm. I don't actually remember. Right. Um, I remember serving with with James Rink mm -hmm. and Kruger. I remember being on the bridge with you. I'll never forget that one. Um, I remember being on a ship, the Sparrow, and my commanding officer is in the group, but he's private. He's not a, he's not public, so I won't talk about him. And uh, I think Rochelle was in the group with James Rank, mm -hmm. but she remembers me from other things that I don't remember. And KJ Scoops mentioned an event that she remembered that I don't. And Elena remembers me from Mars. And I don't remember seeing her, but what she described I did was part of my occasional duties. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then there have been probably 10 other people that have come to me for counseling. That, oh, by the way, I was, I was on Shula at Mars and you wel welcomed me, which is something I would have done, but I don't remember that. Right. Yeah, because I was in Shula for 10 years and, and each, new, each new batch that they'd finish at Langley, they'd bring us. So for 10 years, I would have been there to greet them and welcome them to Shula. Right. So, uh, and that does sound like something I do. And then there was another woman in Austria and she's had to distance herself from me because there are laws about praising the third reich she mm -hmm. says that that my historical analysis violates those laws mm -hmm. so i can't give her name but she remembers me as her drill instructor mm -hmm. and i don't remember that i mean i'm not saying I, it didn't happen it's just I don't remember it. And when you have 2,200 altars and you've only reintegrated 30, it's real easy to see how you could not remember something. <laughs> you know? That's absolutely. No, that's, I've had a couple, couple people remember me from up there. Well, I don't know, probably four or five, six now. Getting mm. up there. Getting, getting a little hard to deny at this point. Um, yeah but yeah that's 
Yeah, I just, I just wish I would like. To, I mean, if I if I work for Dark Fleet, then let's just own it and, and go for it. I just I don't know. I just don't understand my position because sometimes I see myself in a much more authoritative position, and and I don't I don't quite get it if I'm in Dark Fleet because I know that I'm not German. I, I mean, I've looked at my my DNA. I don't. It's not anywhere close. So I don't know how that. That's why I was asking about the Templar stuff because I was like, maybe they would give them a, a commission since they are have, you know, I don't, I, like I said, I was wondering, that was the question. Uh, because I, yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen myself leading like large scale attacks, like big, like 12 different fronts, like massive attacks. Been seeing like the, wave of ships come down, dumping off things, like I've seen that part. I so yeah, I'm not sure exactly what I where I'm at or what that what that side of things is. And I've because I've also been a lot of my recalls I'm negotiating, I'm sitting across with somebody and we're talking, you know, it could be aliens, it could be I mean, giants, it could be all different all sorts of different things. But that one with Joel, where I saw Joel, I mean that was I mean, he was on the other side of the table, and I definitely got the feeling that he was Dark Fleet. So I'm not sure, like I said, I'm still not sure exactly what, where I'm at. Uh, it could have been, a, I guess it could have been an inner a negotiation in between us both, but I, I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't know. Because when we were setting that up, we were doing a massive, massive, uh, not war games, they were war games, but it was a simulated battle that only so many people knew, but they wouldn't. We we're trying to test our forces against each other, mm. see where we stand, and so, I, like I said, I'm just still trying to pick up the pieces of exactly who I'm working for. Yeah, well, Joel, most of the time is working directly for the Draco, right? But hmm. I think he's actually considered to be knocked off in Dark Fleet, right? But. Uh, most of the time he's he's just directly with the Draco. Mm -hmm. uh, where I'm usually on the bridge or navigation. Right. Or if it's a small enough ship, I'm right in the cockpit. Yeah. I mean that's I, I just remember the cockpit. Like I that I mean other ships is different where like I'm just does I don't have to be there's no cockpit I'm just sitting in a chair in the middle of the, I mean, in the ship it doesn't it doesn't matter um, yeah. but yeah that's yeah it's like I said just trying to figure this out and I've dealt I mean I've seen myself where like there's that guy who seems to be some officer and then there's just my regular seems to be just like a soldier guy I mean he's just a fighter I mean he's always I always see him on a sandy soul place wearing some of this armor that I've been drawing and posting. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's who I see most, almost all the time. I mean, at night, when it's like, I literally zoom into their heads, you know, see what's going on. It's shocking how many sandy soil planets there are. <laughs> well, it's the same one. And there's, you know, we're all seeing the same, you know, just seeing the same thing. I don't know. I mean, it's, I, but yeah, I, I hear you. The one that I've been trying to figure out what it is, and it's recurring like, like it's an ongoing thing and I'm flashing between. Mm -hmm. But there's been a war of some kind that basically destroyed the infrastructure mm -hmm. and it's small groups of humans trying to organize to survive mm -hmm. with leftover technology mm -hmm. and they really don't know how to fix it they don't know how to rebuild it you know make more but they're trying to make do with what they have left right and it's there have been times there were diseases hit and times of, of near starvation and the last one 
was last weekend. So it's been almost, it was Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. Today's Thursday, guys. <laughs> so um, I was, I had dark hair in it and it was shorter than mine is now. And there was this guy with dark hair that kept telling me that he was my dad. And I was in that person, so I wasn't believing him. You got my dad. You know, and uh, I w had some sort of a, of a device that you put into a slot in the door, and it was like a key. Mm -hmm. And instead of just turning green to let me in, there were these yellow dots that came up. Hmm. And he looked at that and he says, congratulations, you get a week off work. And I go, what? He says, you're in full kidney failure. And so they put me into one of the holographic med beds. So I know it wasn't knocked buff and because they would have had the, the regeneration tanks where they dump you in. Mm -hmm. And he says, you get to hold still for a whole week. And I'm like, shit, aren't you even going to knock me out and make it easy? Oh, no, you have to be awake for this. <laughs> and that was when I woke up here. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, bleed overs are fun. <laughs> yeah. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. so yeah i don't know what my name was there i don't know who who i was with it did look like that that everybody thought the planet was was dead and that it was just survivors right so yep. but that's the one i have no idea i mean Kruger does use that technology, but so does mm -hmm. Solar Warden. Right. Uh, so do so do the Defense Department groups, you know, like mm -hmm. the one Randy Kramer's in. So yeah. Hmm. And uh, planetary corporations that Elena was in uses something else. It's hmm. like nobody has the same tech. But it's made different deals with everybody else, so. Yeah, well, it, may, it makes it where I can sort of identify which group it was by what their medical technology is. Mm -hmm. No, that's a good call. I try with uniforms, but who knows. Um, I know that the guys who pick me up wear black fatigues with no, no markers. And those guys are CIA. Mm -hmm. And they've got to where they send three or four of them at a time to come get me. Apparently, I fight. And uh, they open a portal. In, well, our bedrooms are upstairs, so it's the other side of the room. Mm -hmm. And the portal is at the top of the stairs in front of the bathroom and the two bedrooms the portal opens this way and they come into the bedroom and get me and they use some sort of a tech to make Lou sleep so he never wakes up during yeah i woke up with, with i don't know if you can see it but this guy the other day wow a portal I, yeah, I could like see him. I could see like a different, like the portal was open. I could see a different room, like totally different space behind him. But yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah, constant, constant, constant. At least I can draw now. So at least I can. That so. helps. <laughs> it helps. That helps a lot. It uh, does. Because they're like, aha, see, now you're exposed, you punks. But. I think that's probably what that see, migraine see what, was last see night. See what I got for Christmas? Nice. So I'll be drawing too. 
Cool. I'll just have to figure out how to get it online. <laughs> I take a picture of it with my phone and post it. That's how I do it. Uh, I don't have a phone. And my scanner from my old computer doesn't work on this one. No. Well, I'll figure it out. I'll Little figure library. it out. I'm this this computer is about about to have to be replaced. I don't have enough RAM anymore. So doesn't have the power. Huh? Doesn't have the power. Just doesn't have just, the power. It was great ten years ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got a whole three. I have a whole three and a half gig RAM. <laughs> Top of the line. It was. <laughs> At least it's sixty-four bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, we've been at this about two hours, and I had I had asked you for one hour, and I think we I think we covered the territory pretty well, and. I think so. I got some got some hungry dogs that are about to break down my door if I don't feed them soon. So yeah. Yeah, I, I noticed it. It went dark outside up for you. Oh yeah. Through, yeah. through your window there. <laughs> Indeed. So, well, thank you for joining me. Well, thank you, Penny. I've appreciated this a lot. You bet. And if you have, uh, you know, like like I said, if you have specific topics or anything like that, and you want to do a roundtable, always happy to chime in or nod or whatever <laughs> <laughs> grin and nod huh? <laughs> exactly whatever it may be okay Thank well, thanks you. again take care